<laughs> so I, I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> so, but, right? I mean, that's like, that's a, that's a really awesome mullet. <laughs> right? I mean, if you look at a mullet in the dictionary, you're going to see that. That's pretty good. So, that's right. So, uh, so, Rick, man, I'm right along with you. I'm a crier, too. You know, I'm 43 years old now, and after my 40th birthday, I, it's like I've gone through like menopause or something. Like I do, I cry over everything, you know? And my son Jake, you'd be like, have you crying again? <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> so, but that's all right, you know? That's all right. Because, uh, you know, it's important, you know, that you show your heart and everything that you do, and I firmly believe in that, so. So, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'm incredibly proud and uh, honored to be here to, to speak with all of you, you know? And just hearing everybody get up here and share their stories and, and then to follow Carl Deichler and his inspiration. And, I mean, raise your hand if you wish there was like another day or two during the week so you could fit in all the different workouts, you know? Like I wanna do all these different things. So, um, uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today and to do this. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll skip over this one here really quick. Yeah. So, um, I would like to start off, and this will probably be my crying time, oh, start off with my why. Oh. And, uh, you know, my little guy Jake is here. Oh. Uh -huh. He picked my, Jake picked my intro song, right? Right? So, he <laughs> picked my intro song, he loved that. And so this is uh, my why here. Um, uh, it's incredibly important to me to be a role model, and to be a leader, and to lead from the front by example to the people that are closest to me, my children, my wife. Um, I feel as though leadership and what we have to offer people to really change their lives um, is significant. But we can only do that if we're living lives that are examples to other people. So being a role model and example uh, for my family, that's the number one thing that drives me. We have children, Jake and Sophia. Uh, Jake is nine and Sophia is eight. For the first time in recorded history, their generation has a shorter projected life expectancy than their parents. And my other wife is for my beautiful bride, Jessica. As you can see, we're really kind of like three kids and one mature adult. <laughs> and looking is always ridiculously gorgeous. Um, we uh, got a late start in our relationship together. Uh, I don't know if you, and people know our story. Jessica and I grew up in the same town, Long Island, New York. Hey, New York in the house, all right. <laughs> so we grew up in the same neighborhood, uh, and uh, Jessica's two years younger than I am. My sister, Diane, who's five years older than me, was Jessica's babysitter, and for her brother, Michael, every Friday night, well, Jessica's parents went bowling. And uh, I remember Jessica's mom was our Avon lady. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. So, um, you know, so I never really knew Jessica. She was a kid at the bus stop, and she was just this kid who was trailing the Avon lady around, you know? She came to our house. We had to like soap on a rope for everybody. <laughs> so anyway, so my mom bought a lot of Avon. So, um, so, uh, so Jessica's family moved from our neighborhood when I was in the sixth grade and Jessica was in the fourth grade. We reconnected in college. And I'll never forget, there was something going on in a in the gymnasium. It was like a career fair or something like that. And Jessica came up and introduced herself, she says, you are Greg Armstrong, my mom, we grew up in the same neighborhood, and hey, you want it? All right, so, you want moves, right? It's like, oh yeah! I mean, so it's this ridiculously, spectacularly gorgeous girl with the best smile I've ever seen in my life comes up and then she walks up to me and she introduces herself, I know you, and I said, oh yeah, your mom was the Avon lady. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So we wound up dating for a bit, and then Jessica dumped me. She dumped me. 
So, so I, Jessica taught me when we were in college. So then we reconnected about five years ago through Facebook. And, um, you know, our life is unconventional, perhaps. We live in two separate states, you know, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. <laughs> so one of our goals is to celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary together. So, uh, so thank you very much for letting me share that. So my promise today for you folks is to just give you the absolute best that I have of me. Uh, the very best from my heart. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is to please, you know, listen with an open heart and an open mind and give me the best of you. And my, my hope is that when you leave here today that, you know, this is something that can make an impact for you and really change you in your thinking and your actions. I, I, I really hope that after today, you know, you don't leave and you say, oh, well, that was really interesting. How do we, well, well, that person was a really good speaker. I don't want this to be just a jacuzzi experience for you, right? So listen, there's nothing wrong with a jacuzzi. You're in a jacuzzi, the bubbles hit you, it's warm, man, it's, it's, it's a good place to be. But when you get out of a jacuzzi, it's really made no lasting impact on your life. So my hope is that after today, I know I'm going to be taking a little bit of all of you with me. And I hope that when you leave here, that you're taking a little bit of me with you. So... I'm a quote guy and I love history, okay? okay? So I wanna share some stuff with you here. But first, we're gonna, I, I, just play with me for a second and uh, I want everybody to, with their right arm, index finger pointed, point up to the ceiling and keep your eye on your fingertip, okay? Keep your eye on your fingertip the whole time. And I want you to start making a clockwise circle with your hand about the size of a basketball. About the size of a basketball, Everybody's got their clockwise circle going, right? Clockwise circle. All right, now just, just slowly keep that clockwise circle going. Eye on your fingertips. Start lowering your hand. All right, so clockwise should be at eye level. Okay, so now bring your hand down to about chest level and keep your eye on your fingertip. What direction is your clockwise circle going in now? What direction is your clockwise? Ta-da! I've been here all week. Try the veal. No, all right. So, so, so what, what changed? What changed was your perspective. So my objective here today is to maybe help us to push our perspective just a little bit and maybe even blow the ceiling off of what our perspectives can be about what we can bring to people's lives and what we have to offer. Because it can be life-changing and it can also save people's lives, okay? So, as I mentioned, I love history and, uh, and I'm a quote guy. So, I like looking back through and, and really kind of reading about people, quote-unquote, common people who have made significant impacts and are leaving legacies that are going to last forever. Those kind of people, like, I'm drawn to that, right? So this uh, very frail looking, very quiet, incredible human being, Mahatma means great soul, starts a, a march called the Salt March in March of 1930 that starts off as a few dozen people, and it's to protest British rule in India. So this was a 240 mile march over 24 days. Starts as a few dozen people. By the time they reached the Arabian Sea 24 days later, Mahatma Gandhi's crowd had grown to nearly 60,000. <laughs> no, so 60,000 people, and you know what happened to virtually all those people when they got there? They weren't handing out medals. You know, it wasn't like, they were virtually all arrested. And ultimately, it was through Gandhi's 
you know, leadership that India ultimately gained its independence. So a legacy of leadership and commitment to principles and what's right. <clears throat> This one, I just have to read. By refusing to give up her seat to a white man on a Montgomery, Alabama city bus in 1955, black seamstress Rosa Parks helped initiate the civil rights movement in the United States. The leaders of the local black community organized a bus boycott that began the day Parks was convicted of violating the segregation laws. Led by a young Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, the boycott lasted more than a year, during which Parks, not coincidentally, lost her job. And ended only when the US Supreme Court ruled that bus segregation was unconstitutional. Over the next half century, Parks became a nationally recognized symbol of dignity and strength in the struggle to end entrenched racial segregation. So this is a quote from Rosa Parks. And I thought this too, until I did a little homework and studied a bit about her and her life. People always say, I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, wrote Parks in her autobiography, but that isn't true. I was not tired physically. No, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. <coughs> I get the chills every time I read that. So a legacy of dignity and strength and standing up for principles, and standing up for what's right. And this really has nothing to do with my presentation. I just think Bono is the coolest person on the planet, right? Like if there was one person I wanted to hang out with, and like just sit and have a beer, you know, I want to hang out with Bono. And I just read this book. I wouldn't run for president. I wouldn't want to move to a smaller house. Isn't that great? So yeah, I just, I don't know, I just think he's the coolest person alive. If I just, you know, had to, well, well second coolest, I think my son Thank Jake you. is the coolest. <laughs> and he knows that, he knows that. And I think he knows that too, so. <laughs> All right. So, I'm gonna have everybody stand up for me, please. All right, everybody stand up, please. And again, play with me here. So sit, uh, sit down if you or somebody close to you, somebody in your family has been affected by or diagnosed with heart disease. Sit down. All right now please sit down if either you or somebody you know in your family has been diagnosed or affected by cancer. All right, so. I find that tragic and unacceptable. It's universally understood that cancer, heart disease, diabetes, these are lifestyle diseases. The vast, the, 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 the main prior, the, the, the major determining factor for these diseases and conditions is lifestyle. So it's been said that the number one cause of death in America is heart disease. The number two cause of death is cancer. That's wrong. The number one cause of death in America is messed up priorities and poor decisions. That's the number one cause of death. You know, so we talk about making an impact on people's lives, you know, as Rick mentioned about, you know, challenge packs and success points and things like that. Those are byproducts of living our lives in a significant way, leading from the front and reaching out and helping other people. Now, listen, there's nothing wrong with being compensated. There's nothing wrong with that at all. There's everything right with that. Any Zig Ziglar fans out there? Zig Ziglar's got a great, great quote, I love it. He's like, money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. <laughs> Right? <laughs> but it's not everything. But if you are <gasps> oh. 
ultimately, you will be compensated directly proportional to the amount of value and service that you give to other people. No more, no less. It's the way it works. So if people are successful and you see people, you know, you know, doing really big things within Beachbody and, and you know, giving up, you know, being able to leave their jobs and things like that, it's because they're putting people first and they're creating enormous value in serving other people. You know, I love, uh, you hear people give their testimonials and things like that. And uh, it's great to hear people losing weight and things like that, you know, and the jacket that, don't, that, that doesn't fit anymore. But you know, one of the greatest things, and I love when you know, we collect testimonials from our challengers, the thing that I love hearing the most is I feel so much better about myself. You know? You know, that's, that's, yeah, that's absolutely what it's happening for. Because that's ultimately, you know, somebody creating a, a, a different experience in terms of that person's self-image and their self-confidence, that has such a trickle-down effect to all the other hats that they wear throughout their day. People who feel better about themselves can contribute more, want to contribute more. They're better moms, they're better dads. I know I'm a better person across the board because of Beachbody and this lifestyle. So just think about what your communities would look like, you know? What would your community look like? Your, your, you know, your state look like? What would our country look like if people were adopting a beach body lifestyle? Active every day, putting ridiculously healthy you know, uh, food and, and, and Shakeology into their bodies, engaging in personal growth and development, and just simply making themselves the best versions of themselves that they possibly can be. What we have to offer people ultimately will save lives. It'll save lives. So uh, this, is, this quote here has been one of my guiding principles throughout my career as a doctor of chiropractic and now through Beachbody. So I want you, so, so right, care of the human frame. Oh, we, yeah, wait a second, yeah. T25, the uh, hammer and chisel and all, right? In, in, in diet, all right, well, taking good things in our bodies and meal plans and Shakeology and things like that and the cause and prevention of disease and living a lifestyle. So I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, doctor. <laughs> doctor? No, go ahead, I'm serious. <laughs> Come on, people. <laughs> How was it going to? Doctor? <laughs> doctor? Doctor? <laughs> All right, so let's uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna we're gonna start to bring this home here. How much more time do I have? You're about 18 minutes in. Oh, okay. All right, cool. So, you know, the title of my presentation was "Success or Significance: What's Your Legacy?" And I guess as time goes on, that's something that um, you know I feel like I, I've thought more about is you know what 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 am I really contributing? to my family, to the lives of other people. And when all said and done, is it gonna matter? You know, is, is what I've done going to matter? And, uh, you know, having children, getting a second chance, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, with the love of my life. Mm -hmm. You start thinking about well, what's going to be left behind, you know, when all is said and done? So, I love this quote from Nelson Mandela. When a man has done what he considers to be his duty to his people and his country, he can rest in peace. I believe I have made that effort, and that is therefore why I will sleep in eternity. And this guy's a filmmaker. He's made some kind of... He's made some different films, but this quote is just, you know, absolutely incredible and really sums up 
this entire message. We all die, the goal isn't to live forever, the goal is to create something that will. Can everybody see that one? Mm -hmm. Because this is like, this is, this is, ju this is juicy. You gotta see this. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this one as well. It's a little bit long, so stay with me, but this is incredibly powerful. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in all of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So, you know, this is the thing, is we're all flawed. We all have insecurities. We all have imperfections. <laughs> but what I believe and what I have observed is that people who are living significant lives and making the biggest impact, they push through that. They push through that anyway. And maybe even use that as a little bit of fuel. Because the only way to conquer any fear and doubt is through doing something. Fear, doubt, insecurities. The cure for that is not just sitting around and thinking more about all your fears and doubts and insecurities. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. Makes them worse. So my hope is that after today, you know, we can use this. Do uh, you remember uh, playing Connect the Dots? Remember Connect the Dots? You know, you'd connect the dots and then it'd be Santa Claus or, I don't know, like a clown. Whatever it is, right? My hope is that when you look back, and you're growing as a person, you're growing your business, that this event here today was one, is one of the dots that you look back to that was a connection that helped you to grow and get where you wanna go. So I hope that after today, we can take a little bit of each of us together as we leave, you know, to be significant, live significantly, lead from the front, and ultimately reach out and help as many people as possible because I see this on a daily basis, folks. People are hurting. People are in pain. People are stressed out. Unfortunately, most people are living just, you know, experiences and existences that, that are less than what their optimum potential is. I see it on a daily basis. And I just want to encourage you, don't ever underestimate what you have to offer, what we have to offer to really change people's lives and maybe even save people's lives, all right? So thank you so much for, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to do this and to, uh, and to meet with all you folks. You're incredibly inspiring to me. I promise you I'm gonna take a little bit of all of you with me. And um, I love and appreciate you, take care. <laughs>